Hello coders, this is Caro, and I'm a video software engineer at Canva with about 10 years of professional experience. Last week, we talked about books that will make you a better software engineer. Those were books about your craft as an individual contributor, including but also going beyond the code and architecture itself, and touching on communication and project management. If you haven't seen this video yet, and if you are just at the beginning of your managing path, you can find a lot of interesting tips and advices there around improving your soft skills or becoming a tech lead, which is often the first step in switching from individual contributor to a manager. You can find the link to this video in the upper corner as well as in the description below. Today, I will tell you about three books that let me understand what a good leadership is, what is the role and expectations of an engineering manager on different levels, and how to find what motivates people and how to become a better leader by utilizing this knowledge. So if you want to grow your career as a software engineer in one or both the technical and leadership areas, consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. That's a big commitment, hey, hey, hey. Let's get to it. In my career surrounding software engineering, I saw many examples of good and bad leadership. I experienced micromanagers that feel threatened by anyone and anything outside of their understanding, and I experienced amazing leaders that approach people with trust and are genuinely caring for developing and growing the people they work with. I am myself somewhere at the beginning of my leadership path. I've been tech leading and mentoring for a while, Early this year, I became a coach at Canva, but I will tell you more about that at the end of this video with some examples of how the books I'm about to present you help me with adjusting to my new role. Book number one, The Manager's Path by Camille Fournier. I hope I read this correctly. Camille Fournier, the author of this book, is a former CTO of Render Runway and a former vice president of technology at Goldman Sachs. In The Manager's Path, she takes you through all the stages of leadership in a tech company. She starts with personal leadership and tech leading through hosting an intern, mentoring more junior colleagues to assuming actual management positions like engineering manager or team lead, managing managers, explaining differences between a CTO and head of engineering. She goes through all the expectations and the responsibilities of each role. She explains what skills and characteristics are necessary for you to develop to be able to get a job at that level. This book helped me realize where I want to be and that my years-long dream about managing hundreds of people might just not be what I really want in my career. This doesn't mean I'm not interested in leadership at all anymore, I'm still growing that part of my skill set. It just means that I can see different places where I can have more impact and feel more happy without necessarily taking all the risks and stress that comes with a very senior leadership. Or maybe I'm simply not ready for it now and I will be in the future. Thanks to this book, I know how to spot that change if it ever happens. I consume this book as an audiobook. Interestingly, I find that books that are not strictly technical and are not fiction, because I mostly read science fiction, are best when listened to. Especially that many of them are narrated by the author, just like the book number two on our list. Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. You probably heard about Brene Brown from her famous TED talk about the power of vulnerability. YouTube recommendations are how I discovered her and her research. Small anecdote, I was fostering this very anxious, easily scared staffy called Shanzi. I live in an apartment close to a busy street in an inner Sydney, so there's heaps of noise at all times. Dogs are very sound sensitive. As a matter of fact, their hearing is four times more sensitive than that of humans. Honestly, I can barely stand this noise, so I can't imagine how bad it was for her. She was very alert and stressed at all times. I tried soundproofing the apartment, playing meditation music, crying forest sounds, anything to help her relax. One day, when I was listening to Brené's podcast on Spotify, I noticed that Shenzi was finally sleeping. Since that day, Brené was playing on the loop for the next couple of months. Shenzi got some rest from her anxiety so we could work deeper on her underlying issues. I'm telling you this just to show you how even voice modulation, the way you talk, has an effect on people and animals. It's part of leading dearly to use it responsibly. Dare to Lead is a book about leading with vulnerability. It's not tech-specific, but it will show you what good leading is. If you check out the full title of the book, Dare to Lead, Brave Work, Tough Conversations, Whole Hearts, you will get an idea of 
the contents. But easier said than done. This book will show you how to do it. How to stay human when you have to manage others. Book number three, Drive by Daniel H. P. Drive explores, well, what drives us. For years, it was believed that there are two drives to human motivation, primary, biological, and secondary, social or identity drive. The book states that there's also the magical third drive. Pink describes and summarizes many studies conducted across decades focusing on what motivates us, how motivation affects performance. He compares 20th century leadership to the currently emerging one. He explains how motivators change as technology plays bigger and bigger role in our lives. Spoiler alert! He states that we are motivated by challenging tasks and solving problems itself, and money and performance-based bonuses kind of spoil the real source that was driving us to do the job. There is much more to it than that, but I will let you explore it yourself. The book is not too long, uh, but it's definitely worth reading. Even if you are not planning to go the managing path, it can be very useful to understand what you need to do to be happy and fulfill at your job. You can find links to all of those books in the form of paperback, Kindle, or as I consume them, audiobooks in the description below. Those are affiliate links, which means without any additional cost to you, I will get a small percentage of your purchase. I will reinvest any of it back into this channel, so if you want to show your support, that's a great way to do it. No pressure though. <laughs> so before I will, as I promised, tell you how we do it at Canva and how my leadership journey is going, Make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. Okay, let's start with some context. At Canva, we don't officially have engineering managers. We have coaches. The role of a coach is to facilitate the growth and development of their coaches. Coach is a very people-oriented role. You can be an individual contributor and a coach, or you can go full on as a coach where you don't try to coach yourself anymore, but focus on growing the people around you and aligning your team's vision. The idea is that everyone has a coach and the role of a coach is to make sure people are happy understand the impact of the work they are doing and have the best chance possible to grow in the direction that they and the company needs. Currently, I have one coach. I'm still primarily an individual contributor and a tech lead, which allows me to practice and develop a lot of the leadership skills on a smaller scale. That includes communication and alignment between me and other software engineers working on a given project, designers, product managers, and the group lead. A lot of the knowledge I use here comes from the manager's path book. With my coachee, I can practice a lot of leading barely, bringing clarity, showing impact, and the bigger picture, helping setting and achieving goals, accountability. I use the knowledge from Drive to understand what motivates him and what projects are the best match for him. How can I rephrase the problems we need to solve in a way that makes it interesting to him? What is the right level of challenge to keep the motivation high, but not overwhelm him? I'm still very much at the beginning of this journey, and I don't really know where it's going to end, uh, but it's a great journey, and those three books definitely provided me with some good guidance. So let me know if you enjoyed this video, and if you have any books you'd like to recommend. As always, I'm super keen to learn more, so keep those comments popping. Bye!